Brother Tozy, thank you so much for joining me here on the Decently Indecent Podcast, man. Or should I call you the Lawsuit King? Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't want to be known as that. Yeah. I don't we'll want any in, more of those. We'll get into that in a little bit. I know there's been a, a few cases uh, in the past couple of years and one more recently that seems more of seems more of a, an empty, an, an idle threat more than anything. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the most recent one. That that one's that one's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited <laughs> to talk about that degenerate loser. But uh yeah, man, pumped to chat with you. You and I, we've known each other for many years. Yeah. Uh and I guess in a way because of our occupational crossover. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we we both I know that you started on YouTube um over you know, over a long time ago, gaming videos, very mm -hmm. Kind of Cinderella story for most young men. They you know, they're into video games. And they start uploading shit to the to the internet, then playing games, and eventually you transitioned into kind of the talking uh, talking head, more commentary stuff. Yeah. Um, that you do now that I've been doing since you know around 2016, 17 as well. Mm -hmm. And you know I started in the music thing, you started in the gaming thing, and we kind of just found each other in this place where we sit down and talk to a camera. And some, by some stroke of genius or grace of God or strictly luck, we were able to make it a career. So. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been it's been great. I think I originally met you. Well, it was probably some Skype group back in probably 2016. Oh, dude, the Skype groups. I yes, yes, it was definitely. That was pre like pre Discord. Yeah, way back in the day. I remember like Quackity was in those groups. I remember he, me and Quackity used to so chat. Uh, dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's been crazy to see the trajectory of some of those careers of those people, like the Pyros, the No Fuckers, like all these old yeah. cats that have all kind of like had their own path. Some have gone on to be massive, like Quackity now. And yeah. there's other like me and you just kind of in our lane doing our thing. And it's uh, it's been a wild journey. But um, I'm curious, just for anybody that's listening or watching that might not know you, like what was, what was that journey like early when you transitioned into more kind of talking head commentary stuff. What was the the impetus behind that? Were you just like sick of playing games or did you see an opportunity there? What what was that what was that like for you? I honestly couldn't find a way to like stand out in mm -hmm. gaming. Like at that time saturated neat. gaming was so saturated. Yeah. You had the big guys, like you had the Vanosses and the uh all those guys. Uh and I just couldn't find a way into it. Knowing what I know about YouTube now, I'm like, I'm, a, I'm an idiot. I was doing everything so wrong. Why was I doing that? But like, uh, at least back then, I wanted to enter commentary because it was it was new. There wasn't yes. a lot of big commentary guys. Um, it was like, what? There was Leafy and Pyro. It, that, it was that like was just it. Leafy and, and then Pyro. And honestly, not, I'll let you continue. But one of my inspirations for getting into commentary was exactly that. I saw that Leafy was like the biggest guy in the space. And mm -hmm. I watched his videos and I was like... Okay, this dude's really not even funny, and he's just like being a bully to people, and he's getting millions of views. So I'm like, I could, <laughs> I, I have to be able to do this and, and find some sort of audience because I think I'm somewhat, yeah. somewhat congenial and funny. But yeah, it was kind of the same experience for me. That was it was early on. Leafy was mm -hmm. kind of the, he was kind of the king of commentary at that time, and we we, we called it commentary back then. It's kind of transformed into a lot of different. Yeah. different places now that an original community and uh, looking back like leafy was a little more like he, he he had such an interesting audience because he was basically just, like he didn't really he wasn't like a talented comedian he was basically just being mean and bullying people but in a way like the editing was good the animations were good i was yeah. i always enjoyed that kind of like I was okay with it because I think the internet needs a little bit of that brass shit, you know? It can't be yep. all lollipops and rainbows. And that's why there was a generation of young kids that really gravitated towards that and really spawned this, like, hey, let's fire up a camera and talk about shit. And that has turned into mm -hmm. a, a crazy, a crazy Yeah, there was definitely a market people. for it or else you wouldn't have blown up like that. 100%, yeah. Um, but yeah, I actually, I, it was, like, kind of an accident because I remember um, as I was doing these gaming videos, I started doing gameplay commentary yeah. because uh, my original gaming videos, I spent hours like subtitling these and then mm. just like farming games for like two funny moments per game to like, like mash into this like three to four minute long video. And I'd realize it's been like over a hundred hours on one video. <laughs> and then suddenly I'd make this commentary video that took me five, six hours at the time. 
And then that one video like dwarfed like all my gaming montage, funny moments, montages, and all that. Yeah. And that was the one talking about uh, the CSGO Laud? No, CSGO Shuffle with the Phantom Lord. Yeah, this is like old CSGO then, gambling stuff. Is that, yes. Yeah. That's and right. then that was, that was still kind of in that niche because at the time I was a CSGO YouTuber. Okay. And then I did that final pivot from CSGO. Started off doing Battlefield content. And then, uh, yeah, originally I was like, I was taking so much uh, inspiration from <laughs> a YouTuber named Chaboy. I don't know if you've heard of, seen him. I recognize the name. I couldn't put his content in my brain, but. He was one of the biggest Battlefield creators back okay. in the day. Uh, so I had a lot of inspiration from him, uh, never figured it out and then ended up making a commentary video that did uh, quite well. And then I was like, you know what, let's, let's, let's do this yeah. way more because at that time in my life, I was also like, uh, I hated school so much and mm. I wanted anything that could, uh, get me to not do school. Seems to be a common theme among people that have been able to, create a business in the entrepreneurial sense, whether that's through YouTube or through a company or whatever, not it, or it's always the the same story of like, yeah, I just, the structured high school school thing just was not for me. Mm -hmm. And I just, I think there's something, there's something to that because, you know, especially now, I think in the last decade or two, as the digital age is, the digital age has really exploded, the traditional, you know, public school K through 12 model is pretty antiquated uh, in my opinion. Like it's very just like subsidized daycare for parents, uh, yeah. depending on where you live. Obviously that's a huge factor. Like if you're at like a nice ritzy suburban school, maybe there'll be some, some better, some better programs and stuff like that. But for a lot of people, that particular style of learning is just not conducive to who they are. And the internet really opened the door, I think, for a lot of people to be like, hey, there's other ways to, there's other ways to make a living and do things that, that don't have to be like, go to school, get good grades, get a scholarship, go to college, go to college, get a W-2 job and all these things. And not to say that those things are bad, there's definitely a place for that, but mm -hmm. it's certainly completely flipped that model kind of on its head in a way. Yeah. And I think that that's a double-edged sword for me because, and I want to, I want to parlay this into one of the things I want to talk to you about is some IRL streaming stuff going on right now. It's, an, yeah. it's a, it's a double-edged sword, I think, because if, on the positive side, it really, it really, cr it really created an opportunity for anybody with a little bit of uh, tenacity and willingness to learn to create a, a career online doing something. Mm -hmm. The flip side of that is it also gave that same opportunity to absolute fucking morons <laughs> that literally just take a camera and turn it on and walk around and be total cocksuckers for yeah. no reason just because they know that rage bait, fucking clickbait, viral attention will get passed around because people are going to just hate them so badly that it will make it go viral because of how badly they're hated. But for some reason that is part of a larger, uh, monetizable business model. <laughs> you can just be the yeah. worst motherfucker on the planet with no shame and turn that into a career. That's the side of the sword I hate, but oftentimes attention there's bad with the good, uh, right? Economy, yeah. the attention economy. Yeah. That's the problem with that. Yeah. So how do you how do you feel about the IRL streaming matter right now, like post kick and like what's going on with the Jack Doherty's? I know you've covered some of those guys, obviously. And for those listening that aren't familiar with uh, Atozi's content, you know, you do a lot of stuff that's topical going on in the creator space. Yeah. Um, I, I like covering uh, laughably stupid stuff that unfolds yeah. on the Internet. That's yeah. Kinda I, I think I, 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 I kind of would. I do something similar, just in a less refined and probably worse way than you do. I don't. You you have like a really well oiled machine, and you're putting out content that's uh, it's timely, which I'm always impressed by how good you are at creating a a video that's informative and well put together in a timely manner. That's something I've always struggled with. I've always leaned on like the all right, I'm going to be a week or two late, but I'm just going to try to lean on the entertainment factor as opposed to like the information breaking news piece, which I think that's the piece you do very well. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. It's yeah. No, so th dude, that's like a battle I've been dealing with for a long time. Of like how much do I put weight on being timely versus like 
obviously the quality of the video. Mm -hmm. And throughout my career, it's like I feel like I've gone in a lot of phases on my channel. Absolutely. Yeah. Where I've had like early, early on, I just broke the news. And then yep. I'd maybe be a little bit offensive towards the person because that's kind of like what the meta was back in 2016, 2017. Certainly same. Yeah. Um, but, and then it kind of like turned into more like breaking the news. And then I kind of became this like reaction channel uh, with my girl Hannah for a mm -hmm. while. Yep. And then she took a step back and uh, yeah, I, I, just, I then went all in on, I guess the modern Atozi commentary Yes. That what it is now, which is like just talking about laughably stupid stuff on the internet. Yeah, and I would say you do I would say you do a good job now where you're you know, you slip in some some one liners and some jabs here and there, but you you're more about delivering the story as opposed to like taking jabs, which I think is is necessary. Yeah. Um depend you know, depending on what they're doing, you're not afraid to obviously criticize people when they deserve it. Yeah. Which is something that's kind of like I lean on that critical commentary. That's what I do, which is why a lot of the people and stuff I talk about, whether it's a body cam or a YouTuber or a streamer doing something stupid, um, I lean on that critical commentary and try to spin it in a way that is entertaining. But it is maybe sometimes, I think sometimes I've wondered, like, was I too critical? I don't know. Yeah. And I think I've gotten better over the years at, at, at finding that balance. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, you. I imagine you have... Uh, I don't like a team or just uh, maybe one guy or something that kind of helps you orchestrate, put these things together. And obviously you have someone that helps you edit and stuff like that, just because the turnaround for these things, when you're talking about things that are somewhat topical to be able to make a good video, you could be doing it yourself, but you're a new dad. You don't have 18 hours a day to be how, editing how videos anymore. How many people anymore. do you think I have on my team? <laughs> All right. I, so this could go two ways. I feel like yeah. I feel like you could run pretty lean. You could run like a lean stack. It could be like you and one guy, or you could be outsourcing like seventeen Filipinos just cranking out people, fucking looking at what's going yeah, on. Yeah, no, here. it's it's been me and one guy until like super okay. recently. Good, good, uh, good. Added another editor now. Nice, 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 nice. Yeah, no, so, that makes sense. I think if you have one guy, like, I think that's keep it as lean as possible. And if you have someone that understands you and you have a relationship, you've worked with them for a long time. Yeah. You can you can have an incredible uh, amount of output w with decent you know good quality content that doesn't require a ton of extra people. I know there are some YouTubers I know that just think that in order to scale, I have to just start hiring all these people, and it's like that's eh, not always the case. I think a lot can be done yeah. with the, one or two balance. good one or two good aces in the in the sleeve. You know, yeah, I, I would definitely say like. Uh, Prioritize, uh, no, uh, prioritize talent when you hire in the yeah, YouTube yeah. space and the creative space because you yeah. need to be getting like a bang for your buck because <laughs> suddenly you have a couple of videos that don't do well mm -hmm. and uh, you're not breaking, you're not making a profit anymore. Yeah, yeah. And if you scale out too quickly <clears throat> and then you're just bleeding out like that, I know so many creators have gone through that. Shame. It's just, uh, it's really rough. Yep. And then you have to do the hard thing of firing people yep. and like that's such an energy suck when that energy should be spent on making content for your viewers. Absolutely. And yeah, it's, it's tricky and it's, it's a battle. I'm, I'm very blessed. Like my main editor, Daniel, we've been working together since 2018. Now. Wow. Yeah. So you guys are like, you guys. So we have, we have like a very a set now. format. We're yep. extremely efficient when it comes to our uploads, our setup helps it be very efficient, yeah. but also makes a lot of like technical difficulties because yeah. I'm not the most technical person. Yeah, we were just, for those listening, we were just laughing earlier because uh, Tozy signed into the call and it took him 10 minutes to figure no out what, mic, what mic to use. He's like, sorry, I'm not the guy that does the tech over here. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness. Exposed, bro. Ex exactly. <laughs> um, recently added in uh, another editor and then now, like last month, uh, no, last six weeks, um, I've started uh, playing around with a um, part-time researcher, which is like nice. been a massive help. Crazy, um, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, that because, I mean, research is like so much of the heavy lifting. Certainly. And obviously it's so important because if you mess up one detail, I mean, you can get sued. Yeah, <laughs> come back to bite you. So... <laughs> 
Speaking yeah. of speaking of getting sued, I I want to talk about I don't well I take that back I don't want to talk about Johnny Smalley because I hate him but Johnny yeah. Smalley is one of these IRL streamers uh, he I made a video on him a while ago when he was over in or he was part of a video with a few streamers but he was in Japan yeah. just being a public nuisance disrespecting their culture um, live streaming on Kick thought he was cool ended up getting run down by, by some Yakuza or something I don't know like I don't know what happened he left Japan I think he's now over in is he over in Israel trying to like quote unquote uh, cover the war or something I, I, he's, I don't. he's past his uh, visa right now so it's unclear what's going to happen there for him okay he's overstayed but, his visa in israel he, he my understanding is he was deported and he was supposed to leave on sunday yeah but then iran did the thing and they closed yeah. the airspace <laughs> yeah tougher to, and, uh, tough to get out now <laughs> yeah if so, he just i mean yeah, if he never returns, I would not be, I would not lose a lick of sleep over oh, that. But man. he, so you made a video on him, and he's now. I saw recently you had an exchange with him where he's threatening to threatening to sue you and all this stuff over slander and defamation. But it's like, what did I say that was wrong, dude? <laughs> right? That's yeah. So what I messed up on on my video was I uh, regurgitated what all of Twitter said by saying he was arrested when he was only detained. I see. Okay. So that's what he uh, apparently was going to go and oh, me sue me for. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I corrected that in my next video. But still, like, whatever. If he actually wants to come at me, that it's, it's going to be weird, especially with all of his tweets about it. No and way. And him wanting to... Uh, falsely copyright strike us and everything. I mean, essentially, that's all we are just do, covering his stupid antics. Yeah, and then we move on to the next stupid antics to cover. It's yeah. not like I'm yeah. thinking a lot about Johnny Smalley here. No, no, no. And he's the only thing he's going to do is do the the cuck thing where he'll try to copyright any of your videos that have him in it. Yeah, there's no way that dude has the cheddar or the time or the resources or the brain in his head to try and litigate anything. Honestly, well, he also has all those Discord messages of saying like he's going to falsely take down channels. Yeah, so so it's true. like we just send those to our YouTube reps and they'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay, so we can just <laughs> release those claims now because this yeah. dude's a troll. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's about it. That's that's as much as I hope I ever have to talk about Johnny Somali. And I'd be so blessed if he just. <laughs> I'm not like I don't. I, I in my brain I want to say something very, uh, uh, probably inappropriate about how he could potentially meet his yeah. demise in another country. But we'll just leave that up to your imagination if he's you know stuck over. It is. It is a so. fascinating thing though because it's like. Johnny Smalley is like, he is the first creator that I saw where everyone watching him was hate watching him. Yeah. So you have essentially like, like the way he makes money is by people almost like terrorizing him with text to speech, trying to get him in trouble. Like yes. that, that is how he monetizes his channel. So yeah. like the, the whole game of his chat is how can we put this guy in the worst situation possible? Right. And then it's funny because we're sitting at home and then we see how he has to deal with the real life consequences of it. Yeah. And he gets paid for it. But then also his incredibly stupid actions just keep making it worse for himself. Right. But how so, much are you really getting paid for a text to speech? Like 10 bucks at a time? Yeah, like, $3 minimum. Uh, <laughs> so I mean like he's You're probably netting a couple hundred dollars. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. A stream that would yeah. be my guess. Um, I, like I think in a lot of cases, um, your average blue collar worker will absolutely out earn him. Yeah, and actually and be providing a no service risk. for yeah, you know, providing like value to society. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh my god. Um, yeah. If I do wait, I do want to actually pivot because okay, so you're one generation above me, right? Yes. So we yes. were we were talking about high school earlier. Okay. When you were in high school, what did you want to be? Oh, this, this is always a good one. Uh, I think I was just a loser and wanted to be a loser. No, I, I'm just kidding. I uh, I had no great aspirations of what I wanted to be in high school, but I will tell you how it turned out. So I went, I was an athlete in high school, baseball, football. Mm -hmm. I was a heavy kid and then got into football and powerlifting and kind of found my identity around being a strong guy. I yeah. was heavier, ended up losing some weight. And I think because of a lot of the insecurity that came around being a heavier kid, once I started to gain some confidence in being strong and mm -hmm. big, that started to shape part of my identity. So coming out of high school, 
I didn't have a lot of direction of what I wanted to do. I just knew that like I liked computers and tech stuff. I liked video games, but also this part of my life that was this fitness thing was like that that had started to roll itself into how like who I was. So mm -hmm. leaving uh, as I was applying to other colleges, I was like, I, I don't even know what I want to major. I remember literally, I, so I went to UNH up in New Hampshire and I had, they send, after I got accepted, they sent me like a, a card in the mail with like all the majors and like check the box, right? Like, mm -hmm. And I was like, ooh, exercise science. <laughs> so I <checked> that. <laughs> and that was, that informed the next four years of my life as an exercise science major studying kinesiology. And I really enjoyed it. I, I really yeah. did. It was a great degree. My teachers were amazing. And then I got out of college, I did training for a year and was like, you know what, as much as I love this for myself and it's part of my identity, I don't want to do it professionally, had this epiphany, pivoted to, and it was around that time when I was like 23, I pivoted to like buying a guitar and wanting to be a musician and that turned into uploading to YouTube and all these things. But awesome. to answer your question, um, most, most of my peers at that time certainly were not planning on, you know, wanting to grow up to be an influencer or a YouTuber yeah. or a fucking, you know, a TikTok What year star. did you graduate? So I graduated uh, in 03. I'm knocking on 40 in a year and a half. College, I graduated in 07. So I'm an old bird right now. So you like- You look younger than what you are. I, oh, I was guessing you were 35. Nice okay, yeah, 35. So I'll get, listen, if I- I have a haircut tomorrow. If I had a fresh cut, I'd look maybe 34. My barber Dave does it up nice. But <laughs> once the beard grows out, it's not like yeah. it's just every single year it just gets more white, which uh -huh. is the one thing I notice the most when I look at older videos of me from like five or six years ago. I'm like, oh, look at Leon with the full, beautiful yeah. red beard, not speckled with white hairs. But but I, uh, I mean I have videos on my channel where I haven't even hit puberty yet. So I yeah, mean like I, <laughs> I believe it. I literally I don't let's see, my first YouTube cover was 07 so i was already in my uh 20s at that point yeah so you know early 20s and that was when i was uploading music covers and stuff so i've always felt kind of blessed and i think this kind of plays into your question and where you're going with it with the fact that i am just an older guy that was able to play kind of a i guess a younger man's game in a way i think these mm -hmm. days it's pretty ubiquitous and obviously there's podcasting and a million people all ages making a living but the whole like oh you 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 can make money on youtube like i literally still get that re that response from people that are from my age group like that i went to high school with. they're like wait how do you you make they're like wait that's your job i'm like Motherfucker, you where have you been the last 15 years, dude? Like what what yeah. what do you do every time you go into the bathroom? You sit down on your phone and you pull out all these apps and watch people doing the same thing that I do, bro. <laughs> but to your point, like you I'm 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 imagining in your what, late 20s, mid 20s, I forget. I'm 26. 26. 26. And Jesus, yeah. So I got 12 years on you. So you graduated high school when? I never graduated. I dropped oh, out. You dropped out. Let's fucking go, dude. Uh, it's. I mean, it was stupid. It was. Real. I dropped out senior year to do YouTube full time. Uh, and That's then the so ad boycott so happened. So you were so young. So it was already popping while you were in high school. Or I'd say popping, but it was. Yeah. You well, had I, got, I got to a point where I started making like three to four grand a month. The, and as a high schooler, yeah. Bye bye. Yeah. That, well, <laughs> see you fucking later. Living in mom's house or whatever. <laughs> well, exactly. And then yeah. I got humbled very quickly when they kind of like. Oh, if you're old enough to drop out of high school, you're old enough to live by on, on your own. Yeah, well, that three to and four then, grand. Is and then the ad boycott happened, and <laughs> yeah, then the, I became the, a janitor. Oh, oh, so you, I, so I heard, I knew about the janitor thing, but I, I didn't yeah. know that was after you had already taken the leap to do YouTube full time and then get cucked <laughs> by your parents and the fucking adpocalypse in 2017. So, a little, little bit of everything time. that happened. Yeah. It was so adpocalypse happened unreal. a little bit later. Uh, I had this like. I had a little bit of a blow up phase on my channel and then me just being a dumbass kid thought that I was going to last a little bit longer than what it did, mm -hmm. uh, dropped out. And then three months later, uh, I was not making enough to live on my own. Yep. So then I went, uh Oh, what jobs could I get as a high school dropout? <laughs> so it's like a uh, grocery store clerk. Uh, yep. I could work at a fast food place. And then I found, um, there was a, a an opening at an outlet mall. Uh, of a superintendent janitor job. Outlet and mall, okay. Super superintendent is, there's nothing super about it. You just change uh, light bulbs <laughs> and toilet paper. Sounds fancy. Um, you drive around that, not at Zamboni, that's for the ice. 
But yeah. The thing that cleans the floor. Oh, the uh, the buffer thing, whatever. That yeah, is. a little yeah. buffer thing. Yeah, those things are sweet. So I had the I had a night shift at that. Oh um, yeah. And so I would like go and into gr- work and you're grinding like, YouTube on the side, obviously keeping exactly. it going. Yeah. I would go into work at like one, two in the morning, and then I'd finish when they opened at like eight or nine. Yep. And then I'd go home, crash, wake up, make YouTube videos until I had to go to work again. Yeah. And that was like my life for five, six months and then, uh, saved up some money and then ended up moving to England from Norway yeah. with I'm Alex and Chubbs and that's uh, right. Scott and yeah. Danny from Omnia. Yeah. Oh my God, dude. That's, so, that's definitely where a lot of our history was too, was yeah. through the England, the UK crew. Cause I knew Alex in, in Chubbs back in the day, they were all part of the early Skype calls. Mm-hmm. And then, um, was that the first time you had left Norway? Because that's where you grew up. Is that right? Or, or yeah, you grew so up in the U.S., moved to New Norway when you were young or something? What was yeah, that? Yeah, I, I was I was born in Foxborough. <clears throat> that's right. You were born in my neck of the woods. Yeah. yeah. And then I lived Massachusetts, like, right? Yeah, Massachusetts. Yeah, lived yeah. like really close to the Patriot Stadium. I think I could walk to the Patriot Stadium. Awesome. Uh, that's where I lived uh, but until I was like three years old. So have no real memories of that was moved so, down to nashville tennessee for a bit yeah and then moved to norway when i was like seven yeah and then yeah lived in norway until uh, 17 18 is when i that's so interesting there. but your parents were american citizens or were they mom's were they... american dad's norwegian okay so there was he had the citizenship then so yeah, was, yeah. just moved back to so i'm a dual citizen i have both america and Norway. Okay. You ever make it back there in time? You still have family back there? or? Uh, yeah, my, my parents still live there. Okay. I, I try to go. Uh, I haven't been since 2021 now, so it's We're, it's been a minute. You're I've due been, for a trip, young man. This I know, I am. Talking. They yeah. are. Uh, <laughs> they tell me that all the time. Let's and say, I, let's that's listen, true. I, I've seen the social blade. The channel's in a good phase right now. Things are going pretty well. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. I, I appreciate no, that. It looks good. You know, it's funny. I it when you when you do what we do, it's like, you know, there's a lot of different ways to monetize things and make revenue. You know, there's business models where I know people that have like twenty thousand subscribers and clear multi six figures with a good funnel and like selling a cool product. But at the same time, it's like anyone can literally just like pull up the social blade of the channel and be like, oh, these things aren't trending so hot or things are going in the right direction. So there's that <laughs> interesting piece of just like. Always like just living with public analytics at all times and having yeah. to to deal with that. So, I sometimes that it, in in the nature of the business too is it just ebbs and flows, right? So like you had your blow up, and every blow up comes with an ensuing valley afterwards, where you kind of find this new normal, hopefully. Mm-hmm. And that was my same experience in 2018 when I had my initial uh, my initial blow up with the two videos about the Australian brothers, um, yeah. that really elevated my channel and allowed me to, to take a shot at going full time after, you know, having a few months that gave me some runway, but I knew that like that was going to come back down and mm-hmm. it, and it did. And it was, but, but the new normal, I was always able to kind of navigate yeah. that. And then every, you know, over the next six years, it's like, you have these phases where you have a, a couple months that are really good. And then YouTube's like, Boom, foss it off. You're back to fucking, yeah. yeah. Thanks for playing. We we loved your videos for three months, but now you're going to have to start grinding again. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's no, such it's, a it's, fucking it's, job. What a job. It man. is. It, yeah. it, it's stressful, but sure. it's so fun. It's, it is, it's, yeah. And I remember, like, literally, like, I, I love how quickly things can change as well. Because that, all it takes is one single video. That's literally your it. your entire life has changed. 100%. Like, that's what I happened was, to me, yeah. Yeah, the same. I was living um, in a, a not good area in uh, in Norwich, England. Norwich, uh, Norwich, <laughs> um, and the rent there was five hundred dollars a month, split by two. Okay. So, uh, and there was a there was a it was like a townhouse, but there was an alley between our townhouse that connected, like there was like two streets between. So people would go in the alley between our townhouses and do drugs. Hell yeah. Um, so we just hear that all night. Um, <laughs> so there was like a lot, everything in me was like, man, I need to make a good video now because I need to get out of here. <laughs> it's time to get out of the, it's time to get out of Norwich. And then, uh, yeah, no, I had that big, uh, I made a few little Tay videos that oh, the little went, went from like a Those million views cranked. a month. Uh, yeah. I think my next, I think I went 
the month before was a million views. The month after, I think it was like 21 million views. Jesus Christ. It was, it was like, so it was like, it Thank went from me like struggling day. to, <laughs> oh, this, oh. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on here? And then like, yes. I have never beat that view month since. Yeah, it, <laughs> so. that, same. I'm pretty sure what my initial blow up in 2018, I had back to back 16 or 17 million view months which for long form content, you know, it was it's insanity, solid, solid, solid payout. And, I, and I, I went from being like, hey, this is helping me pay my mortgage and I have a son on the way. This is great. It's supplemental income to being like, hey, that just dwarfed almost my annual income and in like <laughs> two months yeah. like working in the restaurant. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? So, yeah, that like that is why it is so fun, because it is, you know, it's man, it's it's. <sighs> It co making content is funny because like there's the there's the the people that do it for the passion of doing it, and I think mm -hmm. that there's a beautiful part of it which I think lives in all of us to some degree. But then there's the gamification of it too, where it's like you you spend enough time doing it and you have enough fails, you're trying to figure it out. Like how can I change this or change that? How can I edit better or do these things? And this is back when I was still editing all my own stuff, and you know you're just trying new things, seeing what works and it really takes a level of tenacity and resilience to just kind of be spinning your wheels for however long. I mean, I was making videos for years before, you know, anything. It was just kind of like the steady, like, hey, two people were like, cool video, man. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, those two videos go nuts. And the crazy thing is when you have that consistency, and I'm sure you experienced the same thing that with your little Tay video that went bananas, all of a sudden your entire catalog of videos start to get views because the mm -hmm. way YouTube works, once somebody's introduced to your channel for the first time via one viral video, they're now much more likely to be served your future videos and probably some of your older videos will start showing up and they're recommended. So it's kind of like a rising tide lifts all ships type of situation. Yeah, um, definitely. And it's, and yeah, and it's, it's cool. So I, you know, like you said, man, it's, it can be stressful, but it's so fun. And, you know, there is no way that I could ever sit and complain about what I do for a living. And I'm, oh, I just, absolutely I, not. I'm just, no, there's, there's no way. I, it's just, uh, it's such a blessing. And I'm, I'm just so blessed to have people that continually show up and either listen or watch and whatever it is. So mm -hmm. when I get lost in the, I sometimes get lost in the small stuff of like certain things not going the way I want them to, or YouTube's cucking yeah. me around with their yellow symbols but then i zoom out and i'm like you know what things are things are pretty sweet man <laughs> oh no definitely no there's definitely a, like a few moments uh i'll give you i'll give this uh live stream a fun tidbit uh that isn't known that because no one caught it i don't know how no one caught it i filmed a four-hour interview with phase rain whoa was this like when he was deep into his fucking percocet this addiction is, yeah or? this is way way this was a year ago. Uh, he he kicked the addiction. He was. He oh, was this was a then. year ago. So this was yeah, post this addiction. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I didn't record my audio. Oh! <laughs> Let's go. So uh, did you want to absolutely jump into a wood chipper or what? <laughs> no. So what I did was um, oh. I uh, redubbed my entire side of the interview because Fuck I had his side. Here. So I, I oh, sat four there hour for interview. Yeah. So I sat there. I think it was, I sat there for like sixteen hours. Mm -hmm. and redubbed everything and i was just like like trying to, to his sync response, with your lips? and i was trying to remember what i was saying oh my god uh, so Nightmare. so it's Nightmare um fuel. like it's not dubbed it's re-recorded so i'm acting ah uh, okay the entire yeah, i was gonna say there's no 16. way you can dub over that and make yeah, it sound yeah. normal you re-record yeah so i just had to re-record the entire thing and i had to like so every time he said something i had to stop and i, and I had to look at my lips and then be like okay how did i how did I say that? How did I, what did I say there? And then I just re said that. And then, oh man, dude, Daniel spent, I don't know how many days trying to piece that together. <laughs> so, so that was like the most painful. That was one of those times where I was like, <laughs> let me dolphin do dive out of my window right now. Yes. Yes. Because that phase, was painful. Did Faze Rain ever know that that happened? Oh yeah. yeah no, oh, he, 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 okay. he like, he started like <laughs> laughing like so much at like right because i told him the second we stopped i was like i don't think i recorded my <laughs> 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 you look over dude i that's that's i have such a relatable story that 
happened to me literally last week, you know, and uh -huh. anyone who's been doing this for a long time, you have your flubs where you forget to hit record on the camera or the audio doesn't work. And it's just like, it's a nightmare. Yeah. And, and it's especially a nightmare when you've involved somebody else that's giving you their time. Like it's one thing if yeah. it's just you talking to a camera, you fucked yourself, big deal. But it's another thing to waste somebody else's time. So I had <clears throat> last week, my barber, a friend of mine named Dave, in this set I'm sitting in right now that people watching and see, I've been expanding and like doing some stuff with multiple people, like with my wife on the second channel, we'll sit here and like look at some memes on her phone. I'm trying to kind of create a fun little environment to yeah. have more than one person in. And <clears throat> so I invited my barber Dave over to record a video, just like a, like a normal commentary video like I do, or um, uh, I think we were talking shit about influencers in the wild or whatever that account is on Instagram. Yeah. Um, and he's not really like, and so he's, I think a little nervous because he's not a big in front of the camera guy. So <clears throat> whatever, he comes over, we sit down, chalk it up for a bit, do the video. It goes, it goes well, it's fun. And I look in <laughs> the audio on the roadcaster didn't record and the video <laughs> didn't record. I didn't hit record on the audio or the video. I didn't even have one. And I, he goes to the bathroom. He comes out. I was like, you want the good news or the bad news? He's like, what's the good news? I was like, there is none. I didn't record any of that. <laughs> I was like, my bad, bro. <laughs> oh, oh, what yeah, an no, idiot. That's, yeah, that's, that's painful. Yeah, yeah. But... I felt like such a jerk because, like, it was, especially because, like, the first time we're kind of breaking down that wall and, like, he's yep. coming over. We're hanging out, making content. And I'm like, yeah. So we laughed. And I was like, it's just a dry run, buddy. We'll get to it. So we're trying to, <laughs> we're trying to get back to, we're trying to get back to it this week and do it. Try it again, and I'll triple check the fucking recording button this time. But That's, good lord, what a nightmare! Yeah, I had uh, cameras die on me while I was doing the Area Fifty One stuff, so I had like some corrupted <sighs> footage there. Um, yeah, no, there's there's no. so many things that go wrong, technical. Yeah, that that, that was probably like a out. watershed moment. That video for you, right? The Area Fifty One one. Oh, was, that was, was pretty another, big. Yeah, it was like it was weird uh, because my live stream there was massive. I did a yes. massive mistake where I didn't keep the live stream public. I don't know why I didn't do that. I hit private after like my default setting was it on, on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, it was a yeah. YouTube live stream, right? Okay. And I had like eighty thousand live viewers. Wow. And uh, I, when I ended the stream because I lost service, I had the default setting for YouTube where it goes private, not yep. public. Yep. So <laughs> I didn't have internet for Whoops. like another so like you couldn't few even days, republic right? it. <laughs> So, so what I could have done it, but I'd lost like the interest for area 51 was just that few, those few days off a cliff. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Later. Yeah. So, done. so then I went home and made that like big area 51 video of mine, but it took me, it took us like four days to get through all that footage and to yeah. piece together that video. And it was just like a very normal performing video on my channel at that yeah. time. Um, which is still, it was good video, but it was still like, damn it. This could have been so big if I just yeah. managed to drop it way yeah. earlier. And then that live stream would have pulled those views if I if it was just public the whole time. Certainly, but you live and learn. Uh, there's a whole 100%. lot of living and learning through there's this a lot uh, of job that, <laughs> that you can occasionally you take those lessons and put them to use, and very often you just forget and make the same mistake. That's what I find. Yeah, but that I'm trying to remember for those listening too. That was. Um, what was the draw? It was like a just a online meme where everyone was like, "Hey, we're gonna storm Area 51." Basically, yeah. Some dude named Maddie uh, made a Facebook group as a that's joke. It was a Facebook group. That's what it was. Like, storm Area 51. They can't stop us all. And it went. And viral. then yeah, everyone started like adding all their friends into it. So mm -hmm. suddenly there was like a few million people in this Facebook group, and then people were like. Where Wait a second, go? there's a few million people in this Facebook group. How many are actually going to show up? Yeah. So so we started like cover and then the internet memes started coming out of it. Yeah. And it was like right in line with um we had the international UFO convention in Phoenix. Nice. Where I was right living at the door. time. Yeah. So so I I just I went to that. I started asking all these people about Area 51 and storming yeah. Area 51. They were not having any of it. Uh, <laughs> but that was like, okay. And then that video did very well. So I was yeah. like, well, now I have to go to Area 51 because clearly people are interested in it. Yes. So that's when I decided to drive. Because for me, it was easier at the time because I was living in Scottsdale okay. at that time. So it was like a four or five hour drive. It's four hours to Vegas and then another two to three hours just into the boonies. Yeah. And then you had no cell phone reception for the last hour. 
And how many people that, ended right. up being there? It was a nice little group showed up as kind yeah. of like a joke and stood the, at the gate with some signs or whatever. Or? Yeah. The the thing about it is because it was kind of a joke event, like yeah. the, it wasn't arranged properly. Certainly. Yeah, uh, yeah. Little did we know there was like, there's four or five different gates for the okay. Area 51. So you had like a bunch of, like you had some people at each gate. Interesting. So we didn't okay. get everyone at one gate because then it would have looked even crazier. Okay. I was lucky enough to talk to the Reuters and the Vice guys and figure out where they were going. Okay. Because my whole plan was like, how can I be the person they want to interview at Area 51? Right. So I was just like, I don't know. I, I So I went on to, it was, it was like probably, I don't know, all the main news channels. Uh, where I was just like, who would ever want to miss this? It's the best thing that's ever happened. Yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that. And then no, that so so that that's kind that was that gave me a little bit of a shout out. Didn't help my channel too much, but it did get like a billion impressions. I was gonna the say last, I, like, I remember hours. like the, that moment for you like went viral though, even though it wasn't like a huge YouTube. It wasn't tied to my you. YouTube channel. That's, it, it was, was just more like everywhere. it was more like Reddit, Twitter. I remember you wearing the spacesuit or whatever. That was yes, yeah. And I was, was comparing funny. it to being Jehovah's <laughs> Witnesses for yeah. the U.S. Yeah. military base. It's funny so. that comparison though too is interesting. It just it goes to show the power of YouTube in a way because. You can, you know, you can kind of go viral in like the normal circuit, like outside of your normal YouTube audience and like uh, get picked up in the news. Like there'll be Reddit posts, some memes will go around and it's like, it's a really cool experience. Mm -hmm. That happened to me with a, a short form video I did uh, about the fucking toilet seat and the wife. I don't know if you. Yeah, seen yeah, that. I yeah. remember that. Uh, it's a really cool experience, but it doesn't translate monetarily mm -hmm. really at all. It's just cool. Like, it can be cool. But then on the flip side of that, there's YouTube where you can have a video that can get 10 million views and, like, nobody – it's not talked about about anywhere. It's literally just the YouTube algorithm being like, hey, people like this video. We're going to show it to everyone. And it makes yeah. you a shitload of money. <laughs> so it's such a different form of virality than, like, the normal mainstream virality. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's so funny to see how those things can be so totally separate where like something can go super viral in like the, the news sphere and the meme sphere, and then just be like whatever on YouTube and then vice versa. It's, it's just been very interesting to see. And even um, like YouTube shout outs don't give you that much. Either. No. Like, YouTube's uh, a very unique, it, it's. I was in the dollar of the woods, the Keemstar music yeah, video in 2017. That. Oh my God. I, that didn't have any impact on my channel. None. Yeah, like absolutely zero. I I, and that. I was uh, I was basically an unpaid intern at that for that. I don't even know what was <laughs> happening, man. I, I was just there for whatever. Dude, the dollar in the woods. Fascinating video. time. Yeah, keen star. What? Uh, so I recently saw Asmund Gold, one of yeah. the biggest streamers on the planet. Recently watched one of your videos, as a lot of these streamers do. They watch yeah. topical videos. I think it was the Johnny Somali one that he watched. Yeah. Um. I'm curious because there, there's been off and on a lot of controversy around these huge streamers like XQC, Asmund Gold, whoever else, that spend a lot of their time just watching content on YouTube as part of their stream. Um, how do you, how do you feel about that in particular? Just I only ask because you just had Asmund Gold watch it. Yeah, like you're. Not, I think, like it's not gonna give your channel this crazy boost, but like his video already has more of his video of him watching it already has almost two times the amount of views that your video has just because he's has been gold. Right. So when he posted his video, <laughs> he took search priority of mine. Yes. Yeah. So like on the spot, <laughs> yeah, on the spot. So, Hi. so I can see when he posted that video because I see my real time dropped. Interesting. Wow. So I had a, I had about an 80% decrease on my real time. 80%. He, yeah. Wow. So it was chugging along, getting like 5,000 views an hour, yep. I think. He posted his video, 1,000 views an hour. That's crazy because so much of it's probably search. And I don't Well, know, so everyone gets all the value of my video with the added benefit of Asmongold's reaction. And then yes. his video is longer, so he has the extra watch time. Right. And he has a bigger loyal fan base that will yeah. watch through all of it. So it just ranks better. Um, yeah, it, it, by by every and, metric, it's gonna do better. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. and that's just like it is what it is. Yeah. In my head, I'm just like I'm on to the next video. Yeah, exactly. It's cool that he enjoys my channel and wants to watch it on stream. 
Um, like I'm not going to bicker or complain about it. I'm just no. going to move on I, to the next video. I am curious just to hear that kind of back end analytics to someone who just experienced it because, you know, the argument for a lot of people was like, oh, it's helping out these smaller creators because it's like giving them exposure. And it's like, is it though? Like it's certainly like it, it it's certainly not helping yeah. them acutely in the in the way that you just said. It's it's taking probable views that your video is going to get and they're going elsewhere because they're just watching your video on Asmund's channel. Is it going to make your could it possibly lend itself to the name of Tozy being a little more familiar in the YouTube ecosphere? Certainly there's like some intangibles yeah. that might come from it. Like so, like <clears throat> Maybe there's 20 people that were like, hey, I like this video. I'm going to go check out his channel. Like, those things all happen. And like you mm -hmm. said, if you're making videos consistently and, and you're, you know, you're, you're putting them out a couple times, whatever it is, a couple times a week, you just, what are you going to do? You're on to the next one. You're just going for it. Yeah. You're not going to get mad. But it is an interesting. I would feel is, bad for one of those guys who spend, if they spend like two, three, four months that, on this so, like massive documentary video yes. and then just have a guy just sit through it. That is what I wanted nothing. to say. Cause that, I think that's really where the controversy started to come in because like you yeah. and I, we make videos, like we can crank out a video in a, a day or two days, whatever it is with some research. Mm -hmm. But some of these dudes, like th they're making legit 50, 60 minute documentaries that they spend months on. They yeah. put it up. It cranks because it's a great video, and then XQC is just like, "Yeah, fuck it, yeah, this looks cool. Let's watch it." <laughs> it <laughs> fucking ruins their search rankings, and like probably the same shit happens to them. Where I've yeah. seen tweets from these guys that are like, "Yeah, like people say that it helps these smaller creators." It's like, "Oh, I had thirty k subs. It's helping me." But they watched their analytics just kind of nosedive once that video was able to be watched. Yeah, so that's a tough. Uh, <clears throat> it's it's, it's a tough. tough. Call. It is tough, and I don't know. Like, for me at least, I'm not too bothered by it because it's like yeah. it's free advertising for me in the way yeah. where, okay, I'm getting positive PR from Asmongold. He enjoys the video on stream and in his re-upload of it. Yes. That's cool to me. Um, yeah. I still got over 400,000 views on the video, which yeah. is more than enough for me to not be worrying about money in any aspect of it. 100%. Um. And I don't know, just <laughs> on I, to the next video. Yeah. The next video did better. <laughs> I think with Asmund too, I've always, so as somebody, for anyone who doesn't know who Asmund Gold is, he's a big World of Warcraft streamer for years. I'm, a, one of the I'm a big WoW guy, so, so I enjoy so, that Asmund so, watches so it. So same, so same. So like, I, I, you, you, me and you know, we, we both have enjoyed WoW uh, mm -hmm. over the course of our lives. And so like, I occasionally enjoy watching an Asmund video because he's, he's such a peculiar guy to me. He's just like, uh, kind of this nerdy dude that like, you know, plays up the, I wear one outfit and don't shower shtick, like the wow meme. Yeah. And, uh, but he's just like, loves to talk, loves to talk. So at least he's like talking and adding and commentating. Whereas yeah. I've seen, you know, videos of XQC where he literally just like gets up and leaves the room while the video he's watching is playing. <laughs> His audience is just watching this video while he's not even and then, there. And then the, the worst offense is it's clipped and re-uploaded to YouTube for yeah. ad revenue. <laughs> like that's like... So, it's, so he's there, he gets up and double leaves dipping. and then it's just the video playing with him not there, re-uploaded to YouTube. I guess that's the part that's, that's, that's crazy is... I'm not crazy, but that's the controversial part. Like, if you want to watch it on your live stream, yeah, I think that's fabulous. It is the part when you clip it and then upload it to YouTube, where it then competes in the rankings. I think that's where it can get a little hairy. But yeah, on to the next. I don't know. No good answer. Like you said, I mean, if it happened to me, I I think I I wouldn't care. But again, we have established businesses that work off a, a multi video per month model so it's like yeah. it's it's kind of doesn't doesn't really mean anything it's you're more and also just honored kudos to, to asmongold i do <clears throat> know he actually um he refunds people the ad revenue he makes off of his videos if, if they, they ask for it interesting all right i like that he seems like so, a decent dude like he's 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 like a for the people type of guy i feel like you know yeah and he has an incredible work ethic like the dude's yes. always live <laughs> he does yeah at all times yeah yeah um god damn so, so that's good. I'm also, yeah, speaking of, like, I'm finally, uh, this year, I'm kind of not only solely, uh, what's it called, reliant on ad revenue. Yes. This is, like, the first year I'm actually doing some brand deals, which is, like, 
changed my life in the way where it's like stability. Wait, what took you so long to start doing brand deals? Were you just against it or what was the uh I just or didn't, were, or I don't you just like, didn't have I the just, right connections or on, what? Like I kept on getting like the the lower tier brand deals. Okay. All right. And I didn't want to just sit and chill Raid Shadow Legends 24/7. Certainly. Yeah. So that was kind of like, <laughs> so I kept had, saying no to it Yeah, because I kept I, like the offers I got was like Rage Shadow Legends or like X mobile game that I would uh, never play in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I, I mean, I probably did a raid deal at once. I was, I'm like, no stranger to stooping to the raid. I've done, so I've done a handful of raid ones, I think in the last six months, mm -hmm. I, the, but that's as typically as far as I go. I, I, I'm somewhat selective i have a couple of brands that i've worked with for years that i really appreciate our partnership like raycon a yeah. couple of different ones that have treated me really well and you know i i use their products myself personally from time to time like people always give me shit because they're like oh Ray, what this that and the other thing i'm like dude for the price you're not getting apple Air airpods like you're not buying a bose headset you're getting a just a consumer pair of headphones that work really well for me blah 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 so like for me it's always like if i think if i either i use it and endorse mm -hmm. it. Like another one is like a, a fitness app I use that I've used for years and I love doing sponsorships with them because I use it personally. But then there's the other piece where like if even if I don't use it, if I think I, if this product is good and could provide value to a part of my audience, I have no problem problem doing it. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Sponsors, sponsors, sponsors are total game changers. So I'm happy to hear that you've been... You've I've been, been dabbling and been able well. to. What's that? I've been building a brand as well. Well, that I mean, that's the ultimate goal. I mean, is to so. not just be pushing someone else's brand, but to have your own brand. You can. H then... Have you seen the teasers I did for my brand? I haven't yet. Do tell. So, yeah. So you know, I have this wall mat behind me. Yes. In all my videos. Yeah, it's um, like the the old school play fucking rug thing, right? Yeah. So is. I yeah. mean. The whole thing, the reason I started doing it was because I always kind of like branded myself as a low budget talk show. And yes. all these uh, talk show hosts have like Manhattan or LA yeah. or something behind yeah, them, yeah. right? And I was like, what what city can I have behind me? And I was like, I was raised on these streets. So I'm going to put like this the, behind me. The daycare fucking car Ex mat thing. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, but I also, I spent, that was like, my childhood was that mat. Like, I had like the best. a crazy, like, Anytime I had a birthday, I was like, I want a Hot Wheels car. I want a Hot Wheels <laughs> yeah. car for this mat. Yeah. And like I'd park them all. I don't know. Yeah, that was my obsession growing up. So you're building and off of that? Yeah. So originally I had the the OG one back in like 2020, I think, is when I actually, 2019 is when okay. I was doing that. Uh, so then I made, I got had a custom one made for me. And as soon as when I had a custom one made for me, people were like, hey, where can I get one? Yeah, I went. Oh shit, that, that that one's expensive, and I had yeah. it custom ordered. And let me let me get back to you guys. Let me figure yeah. out that one out. Uh, two and a half years later, we got it, baby. <laughs> Let's go. We're so, firing so we, up we got custom. Those. And then, uh, like for example, like we're also like I can't just build the Atosi ones. I have to kind of build a brand around it. So we also did yeah. like New Manhattan or New York City. Oh, that's fucking. That's actually sick. For those watching at home, I'm looking at a. Kind of like the old, uh, is it a Hot Wheels thing where it's like the old play, the old rugs that had like streets, city yeah, streets on it that are like for mat. kids, Not but you, but that one's Hot a New Wheels. York version. It looks sick. I love and that. The, dude, we're doing every major city in the U.S. So this is the L.A. one or the Hollywood. Oh my God. I love this. So. See, this, this is the, this is what I'm talking about. Cause like, it's one thing to like do merch, you sell a t-shirt, you sell a hat. Cool, dude. Like people are going to buy that and support you, but to do something yeah. unique and be able to leverage your audience that, you know, and, and leverage in a good way where it's like you have this distribution network already built. So if you can come up with something fun and unique or novel in some way like that is, I think that's, I think that's cool. And that's going to, I think that's going to do well. Like there'll be people that don't have a use for it, but there's going to be people that are like, yo, the, you know, I remember when I first saw that map behind you, it's like, even when you don't remember that, you know, that Matt, you're like, it triggers that part in your brain as a child we're like oh my god yeah. i spent so much time on that thing and so, then so for those people uh we're also we've also gone all in on mouse pads <laughs> yeah buddy so, mouse pads the so game that, that's like the other way that's because, sick what when, when did you start when did you start doing this oh man dude it's been like a two-year process of wow just that long 
failing and failing and failing. That's how it goes. Because it was hard to find something that was quality. Yeah. That Because, like, if I'm building a brand, I can't just, like, pedal BS that's going to fall apart. No, no, no. Yeah, 100%. And then, so, and then it was, like, the internal thing of, like, okay, how do I price myself to where it actually makes sense and can su- support people? Yeah. Um, and all that. And then it's just, like... The, the figuring out of all of that is what took me so long. And then also while running a YouTube full-time, a Certainly. YouTube channel full-time. Yeah, the uh, logistics of stuff like that, it's just there's always weird red tape and details that t- take so much time outside of just like coming up with the idea, coming up with the design, getting it done. It's like all this get, intermediary all bullshit. Yeah. finished, finding the correct designer for it, uh, yeah. trying out a bunch of different designers. Like it was, yeah, it's a lot as a part-time thing. But... Mm. We're we're launching it like this week, so I'm I'm happy, dude. That's that. exciting. I'm super excited for that. I'm gonna absolutely cop one. Do you have a name? What's the name yeah, of the brand? Matt Dot City is the website. So Matt City is the Matt City. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. I'm excited for you. That's sweet. I'm definitely you. Uh, listen, I know you probably have gotten New York and L.A. You got to get yourself a Boston I'm, one, and I'll cop Boston's, three. Boston's coming. It's coming. All right, good. So we're, we're doing uh, the next drop. We got. <laughs> Okay, yes, yeah, so we, we're, we're originally dropping just the, the Atosi LA and New York. Yeah. And then we have uh, Washington, D.C.'s finished now. Yeah. And then Philadelphia is almost finished. And then we're doing uh, Boston, shit, Boston, Miami, I think, after Hell that. Yeah. Then we're doing, yeah, Vegas and Seattle and so on. And then expanding <sighs> to Europe if there's any demand for that. Okay. Yeah, I could see there being some demand for some of the major cities over there. So so we're just we're just trying it out, and uh, if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, oh well, move on to the next thing. Listen, man, nothing works if you don't try it, right? That's, that's, exactly. That's, that's the name of that's the name of the game. It's the name of life. I wanna I wanna make a, a mild pivot over to a couple things, kind of crypto related. The first one is uh, just real briefly on Bitboy for those listening and watching. Yeah, the legend Bitboy and I. I, I imagine you're allowed to talk about it in hindsight, or I don't know if there's yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, that's all settled and done with, right? Yeah. But you got sued by the crypto space's most cringe loser. It was the slash, biggest uh, crypto slash channel. One of the biggest crypto channels on YouTube. Yeah. And one of the biggest one of the biggest crypto personalities a on YouTube, and then obviously on Twitter and all these other places. Um, you know, and this guy was loaded to the teeth with money. He was because for for people that don't know, like if you are a big influencer in the crypto space, like during at least when I was around the previous bull run of like 2020, 2021, people were just making silly amounts of money to talk about your coin for like 20 seconds. You know what I'm saying? Like brands just and they like, pay you in the coin and then you dump it on your audience. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, it's the it was best. funny money era. Yeah, funny money era. But he, so you made a video with this guy, and we're like, hey, like, because there was so there was just the the beauty about crypto is there's a a record of every transaction, Probably. so you can be like, hey, this dude is literally just shilling this bullshit, dumping it down to zero. He's charging fifty grand to talk about fucking vaporware, and I think your video was basically just talking about how much he sucked for the most part in a more yeah. story driven, respectful way, of course, and he. To le- legitimately tried to litigate and sue you, uh, sent cease and desist, and sent people it, to my house. Sent, oh, he actually served you papers yeah. to your house. Yeah, he served me papers to my house. Had people sitting outside casing my house. Tried to bully you, and yeah. was he just was he like, hey, take the video down, or I'm gonna do this, or did he just do it? Uh, so first contact, it was like he sent someone to serve me a cease and desist. That was okay. like the first, and then. Before the guy served me, I don't know how many times he tried to serve me, but the guy was like sitting outside my house it's awkward. for a while. Yeah. So that was like, uh oh, yeah. <laughs> oh shit, <laughs> oh no, there's there's real life consequences for talking yeah. shit on the internet. Oh yeah. fuck. <laughs> well, because this guy, I mean, he has he's got you know uh, money to burn. You know exactly. No, not anymore. <laughs> fucking idiot oh my god which is the best kind of how it ended up which we can chat about but it got to the point now the thing that i love was so this obviously you're just a youtuber making videos you know you're you're supporting yourself and a fan you know a wife i don't know this was a couple years ago so maybe before you had your son but getting close but uh yeah I, i got sued 
uh, as she was uh, basically like, like she went into labor when I got the lawsuit served. Okay, so yeah, the, so the time was like, hey, I'm about to have a kid, and now I'm I'm about to yeah. So you don't have all this extra cash lying around to try to defend yourself against some like litigious bullshit from this guy who's like the biggest crypto influencer in the space. So that obviously. That obviously was a very stressful time for you, I imagine, because yeah. you're like, what the fuck? Uh, yeah. I, a, you probably thought, you know, your video is, you, you said. You, well, I was sitting there were, like, damn, worst ROI I could have ever done. <laughs> like, holy shit. Made like, what, two, Strictly three grand off that video, and I'm yeah. going to probably lose 700 bands in, the, in court. <laughs> Just to talk, just to defend myself against a bullshit because lawsuit, because that's all that me is. Federally, as well, to up the cost. What a dickhead! So, so it was like there was so many things he did to up the cost of it, or it seemingly to up the cost. I can't say it for sure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, it, it just sucked. That 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 whole experience yeah. sucked. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. the whole reason I made that video uh, was because uh. Do enjoy a little bit of crypto myself. Yeah, Not an avid. Ad. I don't do any other crazy shit. I just buy some stuff. I, I forget about it. It's just there for the future. Yeah. Put it in a cold Whatever. wallet. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Let's, let's I, I don't like the the modern era of like, you know, shilling pamp coin, <laughs> which is what he was shilling. Like something is like, and then he, he made this video where he was like, this coin can only go up because of the tokenomics uh, yeah because the tokenomics <laughs> yeah. of DeFi, it was like because the yeah. weird universe of DeFi can only go up yeah it's like down 99 percent in the last like month mm, of course it's like <clears throat> good job uh so, thanks yeah, ben yeah <laughs> there was a few rumors uh i heard before he made that video that he would promote these like really shady projects suddenly he'd delete the video yeah when they went to shit so yeah. i went okay i'm gonna proactively watch this guy yeah. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna just download these videos when uh, he posts them, because I want to see if it happens again. Sure and enough, it happened again with Pamp. Yeah. Um, and that's when I decided to make that video because I felt like that was a public service announcement. Hey guys, you might be exit liquidity here. Be be a little bit careful with what you're buying, what your favorite influencers say. Yeah. yeah. And, and he also, he was like. <laughs> He was self-owning himself in the lawsuit as well because he yeah. was suing me for defamation that I was saying that he wasn't someone to take investment advice from. And he's like, that damages my reputation. And he's like, dude, you're not, you're not an investment advisor. Well, that's the pro that I mean, you were affecting his business model of being the biggest shill in the space of absolute vaporware garbage. So, so uh, I, I love that you made it, and uh, eventually what happened, you made a video, you started to go fund me to raise money to defend yourself. The crypto, and I love this, the crypto community rallied, rallied. around you because in, in their shared hate of BitBoy because he was the yeah. biggest clown in the space. If for anyone, like... So for people that don't know, there's like a there's a, there's a place called Crypto Twitter, right? Where it's actual people that are very deep in the space, and they hate like normie crypto people that just shill shit coins to like normies, right? I guess is what you would say. And yeah. all of these people that are actually there for the ethos of crypto and not just to get rich off their followers hate people like BitBoy. So they yeah. all rallied around you. I remember Kobe, who's one of the biggest OGs in the space. Um, help donate, help spread it around. You raised a bunch of money, and basically, they they everyone shit down his throat so bad. I guess he eventually just dropped the lawsuit, right? Yeah. Uh, so this was all happening during the childbirth of my son. Oh my god! So <laughs> you were at like the this was like on your phone, like oh my fucking lord, bro. It was like I didn't sleep for like more than seventy two hours. Oh my at that lord, time. dude. Um, because I remember like Hannah wins labor. Um, right after we served the lawsuit. Yeah. And I went, oh, I don't know how long this birth is going to take and all that. I have X amount of time to respond to this lawsuit. Yeah. Uh, I should, I don't even have a lawyer. So I was like, I should probably uh, make a quick video about this before we go to the hospital. So I sold her on that and she was goaded. Yeah. She filmed that video. So, wow. uh, <laughs> While having as, contractions. As, as her water's breaking, she's Goated. like... Yeah, okay, honey, can Absolute we wrap... Absolute legend. Can we wrap this uh, up? I'm leaking here. <laughs> <laughs> so she filmed that video of me essentially just reading the lawsuit. And I was like, hey, guys, um, 
this will really set me back a lot. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah, is like, yeah. this is going to set me back like more than a year of income here. Yeah, if yeah. I, uh, go for this, if you guys want to help, I do have a GoFundMe here. And then I made also, I dropped crypto addresses. Yeah. Thankfully I did that. Holy yeah. shit. Uh, oh, that's huge, GoFundMe yeah. racked in like close to a hundred grand. And then I got, Close to 200 grand in crypto, I think. Right, yeah. Crypto then, natives like, are just like sending you USDC or whatever. Hours wow. After dropping that video. And yeah, it was it was like a disbelief moment, right? Because yeah. it was like also the greatest day of my life because I had my son. Like that was that was like what a what a what a moment of euphoria. What an epic euphoria bra moment. <laughs> exactly. So like I had my I had I had my phone shut off for a while. So to just be there and enjoy the moment yeah yeah because i just didn't want to stress about everything that was going on That's and then i remember when i turned on my phone i was like in like a state of disbelief when yeah. i saw like how much was raised because i was thinking like i thought i was gonna raise like maybe enough to pay like the retainer like a right. 20 30k retainer sure um and then it'd just be like the YouTube grind to get myself out of this hole. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Maybe yeah. I could counter sue for some bet in the future. Like that was like <clears> in my head. I was like, either way, at least I have some content here. Yeah. Um, and then emergency plan was like, all right, we just like we gotta sell stocks, we gotta sell crypto, maybe yeah. sell the house. Jesus. Like uh there's <sighs> yeah, that was like kind of what was going through my head. But either way, I was like, at least <clears throat> I'm able-bodied and I can make more videos. Yeah, yeah, I can always make more videos. So, <laughs> that, was, that was what was going through my head at that time. That was man. the first time I had, like, proper panic attacks, though. Sure, sure. It's funny, I, like, never, you, can, like, you can look back and smile and laugh about it now, but I'm sure going through that is just, ugh, man, that's miserable. I remember, yeah, so I, I got served, and then I went upstairs, and I just started projectile vomiting. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I was dead ass yeah, just okay. from the stress, dude. Yeah, that's mad. Oh. Like, I was like, I was a like, fucking legend. Th- it like, was oh, no man, in my like, head. I was literally like, this is the worst ROI of any video I've ever done. <laughs> why did I, like like in my head? I was like, why did I make this stupid video? Why did that's I have to so funny. hate this guy's actions enough for that? I, I'm always but it worked in- out. I'm always interested, intrigued by the idea of stress vomiting, just because I've only ever vomited from like like having a stomach bug or whatever. Yeah. But I can see if it just hits you the wrong way and you just get th- yeah. this, this knot in your stomach that just you're like, well, the only way out of this is just boot all over the place. So I'm going to do that and then fucking I'll, I'll finish reading the lawsuit. <laughs> you know what's the thing that I love is what's indicative of how big of a piece of shit this guy is. And I think a lot of people that just have money that that litigate in order to bully people, which is exactly what that was. He didn't have a case. The second mm-hmm. he saw how much money you raised and that you had the support to actually defend yourself – yeah. He didn't want to waste. The, he knew, like, oh, I'm like, if I did this, it would just be a waste of money because if he got a good lawyer, I would get shit on in court, basically. Yeah. So, so I, it's in, I, I, that I, makes I do want to also our, say Kobe it, it, hooked me up with the the law firm that represented Johnny Depp. Fucking love that dude. Kobe's the he's the goat. I, he doesn't know me, and no, probably no one listening knows him. But he's just this this old head crypto guy that made, you know. Early investor made outrageous money, seed rounds, and but has always maintained the ethos of being a, a good actor in the space. And he's kind of taken a step back the last couple of years since the last bull to just yeah. do other stuff. But uh, I think he's working on a project right now. He, he is, I'm not yeah. Fully sure of the full details around that, but yeah. yeah, no, he was. I mean, a lifesaver in that situation because he was just like. <laughs> I just get a tweet. Might send a hundred grand or something later, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh, just a hundred grand? That's oh, <laughs> okay." Thanks, and dude. then, like, and then I remember I shot off my phone and everything. Birth happened. Yeah. And then suddenly, like, I turn on my phone. Like twelve hours later, I see the GoFundMe, and I see my Ethereum address, and I'm just like, "Oh, we're like." We're fully funded for like a. We have a few months of leeway here. Like, oh, we're balling. Yeah. This is and then and then he like got in contact with me and was like, uh, recommended Stephen Polly, who's a lawyer, who also was just very helpful through the whole situation. Yeah. Now is and Zach XPT 
was the <sighs> one who uh, put me into like he was the one who got Kobe's attention. Okay. From it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's the he's goaded as well. He's he's, he's the he's actual he's the actual sleuth of crypto Twitter. And they raised like they did some NFT sales as well to raise funds for it as well. Yeah. No, it was wild. So to put the cherry on top of this whole story, have you since this all happened? Have you seen the absolute uh, disaster and downward spiral that Crip Bitboy's career online has been? So I live streamed his arrest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so that happened. You no, know, so so you've seen it. Is what you're trying to say. <laughs> yeah, Carlos has my Lambo. Yeah, so for just to try to summarize for anyone who's like listening, like what the fuck are these guys talking about? After this guy did this, his life is kind of unraveled. I think he went on like what seemed. I I believe he was. Uh, the, it came out that he was. Maybe a recovering addict, got back into the nose candy a little bit, spiraled out of control, was like cheating on his wife. He was like live streaming. It was like this super awkward. He was like with his mistress outside of his wife's house and like live streaming all yipped up and like just ended up getting fired from his own company, like BitBoy Crypto, whatever it was. And just frankly, getting what he deserves, in my opinion. So, I mean, I'm sure he's still got plenty of money lying around, but the dude's clearly a disastrous wreck. And I'm just like, listen, man, you you reap what you sow. You're gonna be that type of piece of shit. And uh, you know, the money and 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 you know, the Lambo is only gonna get you so far if you don't have any sort of moral foundation or character to rely on. You end up crashing and burning just like he did, and you love to see it. Yeah. No, it's it's been a mess, and I'm not updated on like what's currently going on with the uh, Carlos and the Bitboys Lambo, and yeah, all the other wild accusations he was throwing around in that live stream, yeah. Um, but like the the big kicker was like, oh, the mistress that he promised he wasn't cheating on his wife with anymore was in the car with him while he was live streaming. Yes, I remember that one, and basically like ding dong ditching uh, this carlos guy i don't know if you saw the oh, ring camera clip i did yeah that was <laughs> wild <laughs> he was like <laughs> carlos didn't want to answer the door and then you just see like this photo of him like running up ringing the door and sprinting away yep. <laughs> like, yep what oh my god so it well before we wrapped up the crypto piece i'm curious because you know me and you used to chat off and on back in the 2020, 21, the earlier bull run. I, I got into the crypto space in, in 2020, early on mm -hmm. in that year, kind of at the beginning um, of that of that bull. Just, you know, that was co that was COVID time. It was like my, it was my first soir soiree into investing in general. So like I got into it for the investment piece, but then just learning about the blockchain technology and the underlying technology around this new infrastructure that is kind of, uh, you know, is is disrupting the finance industry. Yeah. And it, it's funny, like when you when you talk about crypto with people that haven't spent time in the space like you and I have, it's it's very hard to get past the general perception of it just being scams and vapor because yeah. It is a lot of scams and vapor. Like, there's no question. There's just so much dog shit in the space. But at the same time, it really opens up. It you know, it democratizes finance in a way. Like, it it, it gets rid of the gatekeepers. It, yeah, it permissionless it's building, payments. Yeah, permissionless payments, uh, trustless blockchain technology, uh, being kept on a centralized. You know, I'm sorry, a decentralized ledger. And you can set, so I could go on for hours behind the, the things that's wonderful about it. But like, how is your, I'm curious, like how has your perception or opinion changed from that bull run? And then, you know, we topped end of 21, 22 was a disastrous downward spiral everywhere as interest rates went up, bear market for a couple of years. And now as we're what I would say kind of in the inning three to five of kind of a new bull run, essentially, as mm -hmm. things start to pick up, Bitcoin hit a new all time high again recently. And now we've the past few days had a, another, you know, just a tasty little 30 percent correction, whatever it is. But uh, how, how is your perception? Has, has your ethos kind of remained the same as yeah. far as how you feel about the industry? And how is how is your outlook changed over the last couple of years? Or or has it not? I don't think my outlook's actually changed okay. uh, in the last few years. Um, but I haven't like acquired any of these like new age 
coins. I'm not like jumping around on these like Solana meme coins. Like insert random racial slur or derogatory term. <laughs> Joe Bowden, you don't have any dog. You don't. Have, you don't have any dog with hat, bro. Come on. I don't have any of that. Uh, I don't have any Yo Bob Biden or whatever. It was like Joseph a Bowden. J- Joseph Bowden. Something like that. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, don't get me wrong. This shit's hilarious, and there's some people. Printing stacks because it's a casino. That are, like, it's a casino, and they're printing because they know how to like follow wallets and do all the crazy sleuthy shit. But yeah. it's not. It, it's funny because like that. It, it's it's the it's the the ICO mania of early Ethereum, yeah. like on steroids now with the meme coins because there's just you know no fees basically on Solana. But it is funny to see like there is something culturally relevant about that though because it allows people to. <coughs> Excuse me. It allows people to cre- like monetize culturally relevant funny things that can then yeah, kind play of hot take, potato with it. That can take this life of their own. But like you said, but like, but it is generally just a casino, really. Um, yeah, it's it's one big game of hot potato for yes. at least the meme coins. Yeah, who's the last one that's going to be holding it, and then you just get wrecked eventually. So yeah. No, it's it, it's fascinating. Uh, yeah, I mean the 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 original stuff like the Bitcoin and Ethereum, I'm still holding. It's same. Yeah, uh, I'm trying. I, I don't. I won't even like. I am so notoriously bad at selling. I've found out because I got <laughs> in at 2017. Yeah, I completely missed the the top of I. I sold like you just round 75 percent of my portfolio. Everything. Yeah. When Bitcoin was at 3K in 2017. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, don't, wanna, so, don't like to look back at those blockchain transactions and tell you that. Exactly. Oh, my. Yeah. Uh, dude, I oh my God, I bought a, um, yeah, I, I bought a keyboard and mouse for Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like the, way, way back in the day. You're like, you're like the pizza that guy. That <laughs> makes me want to puke. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, I can only imagine the, the pizza guy. I mean, what was it? 20,000 Bitcoin for a pizza at the time? Some, some crazy. Something that, like that. But they're like, people are saying it's like hundreds of millions of dollars today. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But no, I think I have spent the equivalent of like 15 grand on a keyboard and mouse. Which for is what a the present, bit, present day Yeah, what the present day value of it yeah. is. Um, which is, you know, great. Lo- love that. Yeah. Um, I-, I was introduced to it originally uh, back when I was playing World of Warcraft because yeah, I was I, selling dude, a little bit of gold and uh, then got a little bit of Bitcoin for it. I, 90% of the, the crypto natives in the space that were in early and are just like multi-generationally retired now are like RuneScape addicts, World of Warcraft yeah. guys, like early... G- old school like MMORPG guys that like were grinding like selling leather skins and like trading shit at the town bank like because crypto is literally just the real life version of that it's like it's the same yeah. thing you're like it's the digital money game that you couldn't do before crypto was created and they're you know they've been playing the digital money game forever in these fantasy worlds and then crypto came along and created this real life digital money game and these people absolutely fucking crushed it um, mm-hmm. so it's been really interesting to see, but I'm, I'm kind of in the same space where, you know, I, I was a little bit cavalier early on in 2020, 21, you get the, you know, you feel like a bull market genius for a while. And I, I had my core holdings, but I spread myself out into some other things, round tripped a bunch of stuff, made a bunch of money, lost a shitload of money, like a lot of learning experiences, you know? Yep. And as, but I always had that kind of core holding that I just sat in the cold wallet, forgot about because I just my my belief in the technology and it's uh, the inevitability, in my opinion, of it disrupting, you know, mainstream financial markets uh, has never has never wavered. So, you know, I've always had these things that sat by. So like you forget about it because it's bear market. It's unexciting. No one's talking about it. There's the 90th headline that crypto's dead. Then all of a sudden it starts perking up again. Oh, next thing you know, fucking BlackRock, the biggest investment firm in the fucking world is approving, is, 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 is filing for a Bitcoin ETF. And then that gets approved. And so now you have this first kind of like real world mainstream financial instrument that is really validating Bitcoin as a store of value. Now you just can't argue against that now because there's a literally an ETF for it. It's the new Mm -hmm. digital gold. So like 
uh, I just I could I just get so excited about it just from 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 that perspective of it being something that is here to stay. It's gonna it's gonna go through different phases. It's gonna I don't know. I mean, America hates it. You know, you look at the U.S. government definitely does not like it. And we they're want the doing US every, dollar in the yeah, U.S. to be yeah yeah they're doing thing. everything they can to make people think it's only used by pirates and hookers. But um, yeah, it's Hong crazy. Hong Kong just uh, did something with both Bitcoin and Ethereum recently. I think I, I did if see they legalized I, or if they they made it. I think you can buy it. And that, which is crazy because China has been notoriously same thing, communist country, very like, hey, we can't have anything that's not owned by us being used as some sort of monetary replacement, like restore value. Yes, yeah, so they they approved the launch of a spot Bitcoin and Ethereum ETF. And Hong they, Kong did. Hong Kong, yeah. Let's fucking go. So was, get... I enjoyed my time in Hong Kong. I went to the Board Ape Yacht Club Festival there, got my eyes uh, sunburned, <laughs> dude, fried out of my brain. Fucking forgot about that, dude. Oh, my and, God. Oh my God. I just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, but you, right place at the right time a lot of times, apparently. Wow. You, I remember that. I remember seeing that post from that, from that, uh, the, the party go viral and being like, that's insane. How fucking ignorant are these people? And then finding out after that you were at it. I was like, what the fuck? And for people listening that don't know, uh, there was a, uh, a party that was thrown in Hong Kong by the Board at Yacht Club, which was like yeah. one of the biggest NFT communities communities at the time, still is. And instead of what was it? Instead of black lights, they used like uh, uh, they UV used lights, UV cleaning, UV cleaning lights they for used hospitals, UV cleaning lights as their fucking show lights, so, and it roasted people's corneas. Bro, I was so I had footage of it was only one room. From what oh. I know, it was only one room. I had footage okay. of myself in that room while I was there. So I knew exactly how many seconds I was in that room. I was yeah. in that room for 41 seconds. And I had a, like, a pretty serious burn uh, like back in the back of my eye. Jesus. So I, I went to the eye doctor about it. And because essentially like I had that, that battlefield solar flare a little bit walking yeah. around yeah. uh, kind of like when you stare into the sun and then you look away you kind of see it's all just sorts the peripheral of shit fly, fly, flying around your peripheral uh, yeah so bit. i had yeah. a little bit of that uh but it didn't hit it, it didn't like start affecting me until like a day or two after mm. that's when it suddenly like it felt like a serious sunburn on the inside of my eyes Ugh, uh, that sounds and then awful. I don't even went know to the doctor like. and he was like yeah, they're they're burnt. You'll be fine though. It'll take like six to eight weeks to heal, and then okay. you won't have any symptoms anymore. And it, it did like good six to eight weeks. Didn't have any symptoms anymore. So that that was good. I was extra careful for the solar flare. Did you guys? Did puts. you get paid? Did they like pay out for that or or anything? No. Was there any sort of no a, a compensation? Nothing. It was just like, oh, my bad, guys. We almost blinded you from yeah. Our so they were kind of like, uh, my bad. We can pay your hospital bill. Okay. That's kind of like what they were offering, uh, but yeah, that was that was really it. Okay. I didn't. Tr I mean, granted, like my, if, my if, you were, if you were, if you were, I if you were injured worse and needed like serious care or something, oh, yeah, maybe yeah, that yeah. could have been different. But do you know if there was anyone there that was like in there longer that got like that got it really bad or I don't remember. There, at the there time, was a few maybe. guys. So one of the guys I was talking to on the plane, apparently he was like in that room for like hours. Yeah. And uh, like, he had like blistering headaches through the entire flight home. Yeah. Um. So so I noticed that then, and then as he started saying it, I started feeling a little bit more and more mm -hmm. of it. And I was like, "Is this placebo? I can't tell if this is placebo yeah. or not. <laughs> like, what, what is? Why He's are all these people? Why is he fucking with me? <laughs> I know. And yeah, I know. So when I when I landed in San Francisco, that's when I was like, oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, my eyes are Something's hurting going now. On. This is yeah. this is not normal. Uh, but yeah, no. Essentially, uh, this guy who supported the lawsuit uh, with me was just like, "Hey, I'd love to have your take on the Board Ape Festival in Hong Kong. Uh, do you want tickets?" I was like, "Yeah, sure. That sounds like a good time." <laughs> Sweet. Why not? Was not I was not paid by any official at Board Ape or anything like that. They were just like, "Here's tickets. If you want to go to Hong Kong for a video, sure." And I checked the prices, and I was like, "Okay, two grand, a little over two grand round trip for hotels and flights." Yeah. This, all right, yeah, I could do a video on this. All yeah. right, let's uh, an experience because it's not like I get to travel that much. 
So that was cool. Well, I'm glad you still have your eyesight. Same. That it could have been <laughs> could have been way worse. Yeah. <laughs> so if you had 100 k right now, could only invest in three coins. Yeah. What would they be? Oh shit, dude. I know. I mean, you can go easy with the. I mean. Yeah, I mean, like it's. I'm still I'm still very Bitcoin uh, heavy weighted. I like on, it on my por portfolio. I like it. So I mean, I'd probably put what half in Bitcoin instantly. <coughs> Yep. Uh, twenty five percent in Ethereum, probably. Yep. yep. And then I'd start divvying it up from there into maybe some I don't know higher risk, higher reward yeah, place. We'll, yeah, we'll see. So like maybe shit. So the problem is I don't know. Maybe get an L two exposure. So like maybe Polygon or Arbitrum. Uh. Yeah. Maybe a little chain link. I like it. Maybe a little, little Tezos for the for the yeah. absolute moonshot bag. Certainly, that's uh, they're in dire need of some liquidity. If they get some liquidity, maybe their <laughs> upgrading uh, protocol will actually be yeah something in the future. Yeah. We'll see. That's been my my greatest L in crypto is just holding Tezos for since twenty nineteen. Yep. Yeah, it's so. funny, man. It is. It's it's easy to. Marry a bag when you really are hyped about the actual what's going on behind the scenes, the team, what they're building. But for unfortunately, so, like the general market oftentimes just doesn't care about that until it reaches critical mass, or even if it does. Like for me, like Chainlink is the one for me, like is it's the biggest meme in the space where it's like, uh, you know, a lot of the guys are like, oh, it's a stable coin. And granted, it's not, it goes up and it goes down. But yeah. Uh, when when I'm thinking about uh, utility and the the need for the chain link as a technology moving forward over the next ten years, it feels like inevitable that this thing is going to be, in hindsight, uh, an absolute home run buy. But who knows? Ten years could go by and it could just <laughs> go to zero. But yeah. that you know, to me, is something that is going you know. Their, There's no their, other their Oracle goal is lofty, you know. What's that? There's no other Oracle competition. Right. I mean, you have Pyth, but they're. I mean, they're, it's a different technology. It's uh, there's a there's a lot of things you yeah. can get into that's very technical. But yeah, they seem to me like the building blocks of bringing real world assets on chain, tokenizing financial institutions, obviously payment systems, and and you look at the integrations that they're making and the people they're talking to. That to me is like, I don't know. So yeah, I've been I've been I just kind of was like holding and then. I've been crash, holding I, that thing for way yeah. too long as well since 2019 as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just going to – I kind of started to accumulate more. For me, I set numbers. After the last bull in 21, when I was like, oh, this is great. Like, it's impossible to lose money in crypto. And then you get punched in the face. Yeah. Then you have to kind of take an inventory and be like, all right, what actually matters? What's going to be around in 10 years? And I yeah. set numbers for myself of like I wanted X amount of Bitcoin, X amount of Chainlink, X amount of ETH. And then I hit those numbers in the bear and just put them on a cold wallet. And I'm like, mm -hmm. either <clears throat> I forget about this and my life is okay anyways because I have a business that makes me money and I'm in a fortunate position there. Mm -hmm. Or in 15 years to 20 years, I'm going to be unbelievably wealthy. <laughs> so, and, and both of those things are great. And I, and I can cope with both. And then I, I have some other, you know, so, uh, some other money I used to fuck around with, like a couple of higher risk bullshit, but like dog with hat. Yeah, exactly. You just buy a couple, <laughs> couple grand a whiff just to see what happens. Dog I, with hat I, I bought whiff at 30 cents and wrote it to 60. I two X it and then it went up to fucking four, four dollars and 50 cents a month <laughs> later. Classic. Hell like, yeah. I look at these dudes that ride like me. They buy early meme coins and ride them to like a, a thousand X. And I'm like, you're always like, oh man, that's crazy. But it's like most people don't have that resolve. Like you see that first two or three X and you're like, oh, and you just, and you sell. Cause you're like, I know a creator <laughs> who made 800 grand on poop coin. <laughs> that's despicable. So, dude. <laughs> so that's like, that's just like pulling a slot and getting fucking. Oh, oh fully. Grand. Yeah. And it wasn't even like his investment wasn't a lot either. Yeah. Like so it was like it was like a outrageous return. Yeah. I mean it's a lot for a normal person, I would say. But right, like, maybe like a couple thousand or something like that. Yeah, I want to yeah. say put five K. Okay. Which yeah, which is a lot of money to put into a, a oh, something yeah, something called, called, called coin. Poop coin. <laughs> um but I mean, hey, if you if you're a massive creator and 
If, if you, you have five grand 5K. to spend, yeah, if you can afford to lose it, that's what it comes down to. That's that, that's the thing is it's like if you if you have money you can afford to lose, you can you can play around in the crypto casino if you want. Um, <laughs> but, but it's a casino for sure. But it's, it's like a casino. To- and then there's the other stuff that that's that, you know, I think are actual investment vehicles like the Bitcoins and the Ethereums and stuff that could be. But we are not financial advisors for anyone. Listening. Nope. No, uh, no. I, that I, is none absolutely. of that is a recommendation. That is just two young gentlemen. <laughs> Excuse me, one middle-aged man and one young gentleman <laughs> talking oh, about cryptocurrency. But the the last thing I want to ask you, just because I've had such a good time just chopping it up, I hope the audience doesn't mind. I just I love talking about fucking crypto and BitBoy <laughs> and all this stuff. It gets my dick hard. But uh, you and you were talking about this just during the BitBoy saga. Recently became a well, recently became a father two years ago, a little under two years. Your son's almost yeah. two now. Yeah, one, yeah, a little over one and a half. How fucking cool is being a dad? It's awesome. It is the most it. exhausting <laughs> but rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah, that's it, man. So that's it. No, nah, it's it's been great. Yeah, we went it was swimming funny. today. Yeah. First oh, time. Yeah. It was it was cool. You it swim was sick. swim class? Where did you no. like just go solo? Just went solo. Hell yeah, to a pool just, or yeah, just pool. Uh, strapped him up in a little floaty vest, and yeah. I just kind of like. Paddled was, around with was him. he scared of the water at first? It was he all right? Uh, no, actually not. He he was like unsure what it was, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, wait, this is more than a bath. Yeah, this is <laughs> a huge body of water so, here. <laughs> so he was like kind of standing there, and they had like, um, yeah. No, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to give specifics of where it is. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah certainly. So, but uh, but essentially, yeah, no, so. For, at first, he was standing in, like, the shallow end of it. And that was cool. And then he was accepting to me, slowly pulling him out as long as I held him. Yeah. Um, and he had a good time. We, we hung out in the pool for, like, 40 minutes. That's awesome. And went back home for a nap. Yeah. And so you're 20, you said 27 now? So 26. I mean, 26. So you had... <coughs> right? I turned, 24. 20, I turned 27 in a week. So okay. Like, so you had him at 25. And yeah. that's great. I mean, I had my son when I was 33. So that's like, I, you know, I, kudos to you because, you know, so many people now I feel like are waiting until they're, you know, in their 30s. It's like 30s kind of the new 20 for having kids. But mm. I don't know, man. It's if you're in a place in life where it makes sense. And I know you you'd been with been with uh, your wife. I don't you I'm sure you for say her seven name online, years. But yeah, you've been with your wife for a while and it just seemed like. It's the next logical step. And I, I know for me, and I think, you know, it may sound cliche to say this, but like once there's a having a child in, I don't, maybe it's a son or a daughter or something for me specifically, I think something about having a son just kind of reshapes the way I viewed the world in general. Oh, just cool. a lot of things. It, it unlocked a, a part of me, an empathetic part of me that I didn't know even existed. Mm-hmm. Uh that I'm super grateful for. I don't know. It just and he's also like the best accountability partner 100%. in the world. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Because like, yeah. like I procrastinate way less because I don't yeah, have time yeah. to anymore. Almost. Oh yeah, you <laughs> and have then, to. And then also it's just like that pressure of I want to be as good of a dad as possible. Yeah. And I want to be someone that he is proud of. Yes. So that keeps me going. Hundred percent, and that's so important. And it's like you say, the pressure is is a good word for it, but it's also like, um, it's it's a good pressure. It's like a it's yeah. a, it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's it's accountability. It's yeah, like, it's accountability. It's like I'm blessed to have an opportunity to be a good example for this young man and try to, ter- you know, have him grow up to be someone who has had a father that gave him a good example so he can kind of get through this crazy fucking world we live in. Because yeah. I always think of this, you know, you so much of, there's a lot of, a lot of parents, there's a lot of talking about what's the right thing to do and all these things. And you can, you can flap your gums a lot, but really, you know, kids are a sponge and yeah. more than anything that you say, they will inherit and watch what you do and how you act. So <clears throat> that is uh it is so important, and like you said, you're, you're a little accountability buddy. And it's Literally. like, you know, I remember one of the first times I, I really was, I mean, he was like seven months old or something, and I was responsible. 
This is when my wife was still working Mm -hmm. and I was responsible to get up early in the morning and be with him for like an hour or two before taking him to daycare because my wife had to work early and I, there was like a Thanksgiving party and I got way too fucked up the night before. And I woke up, like she wakes me up, she goes off to work and I'm like, okay, I'm fine. I'm like feeling pretty shitty. It's whatever. And, and I like sat down on the couch and he's like, I think he was enough to like, he was crawling at the time and I fat, yeah. sat on the couch and I'm like falling asleep. I'm like, okay, perfect. I wake and I wake up like 10 minutes later and he's like ripped all the paint off the wall and shit. And I was, well, I, I just did. remember that moment and it was very, you know, it was not a huge deal. Very, very minor. Yeah, yeah. Like, but I remember that moment feeling like such a fucking failure. I was like, I can't believe I fell asleep. Well, I yep. was supposed to be taking care of my son, and he was like, "Thank God, the only thing he did was like rip the paint off the wall." And that was like a watershed moment for me, being like, "All right, you like, let's get it together, Leon." Like, yeah. And if that's the worst thing I ever do, I'm blessed. I'm sure I've done other bad shit too, but <laughs> you know, parenting's a, it's a tough job. It's a fun job. It's exhausting, but but super rewarding. And yeah, man, I just uh, I thought I'd ask. Are you do you guys know? Or are you planning on having more? Or do you want to? Or I I hope I hope yeah. so. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Love it. Love um, it. probably not now right away, but definitely in the future. Good shit, man. I'm trying to, I don't know. Uh, I really, really, really want to like, um, I guess establish myself more on, uh, YouTube and through my career. Just business in general. Give yeah. also like, um, my son enough time. Yeah. Um, and then branch out and then have more later on. Yeah want to get a new place and so on as well before that so now do you is your office like where you work out of close to your do you have a separate place or do you work kind of out of the home or i I work out of home right now yeah yeah so same so it's and it's such a blessing because it's so awesome to be able to be there like when you want to but it can be so hard to have those boundaries sometimes when you really need yeah. to be disciplined and yeah. like your son knows you're around and just wants to see you or whatever it's it yeah. can be it can be a struggle but it's it's such a it's a great struggle to have as opposed to like you know having to travel or be gone all the time and not have the option to to go see him or, or whatever and that for me you know we i just have the one uh son and i think um the it was we had him right around the time where I had my first kind of channel blow up where I went full time. He was like two months yeah. old. My channel pops off. I, I leave my job, start doing it full time. So like he was there from the, so there's all that added kind of, like you said, the pressure and the stress of like, Oh, I have a family now I need to take care of. And mm-hmm. then at the same time, I'm like, Oh, I'm leaving my job. But um, I don't, it's been such a, a, a balancing act, kind of this delicate dance of wanting to make sure I'm putting in enough effort and time into the business, into into growing something and working towards something. <clears throat> because as you know, there's no limit to how much you can work. You know, you could work yeah. 20 hours a day if you wanted to because this, there's no ceiling to what you can do in the digital age. Um, so it's been this balancing act of that mindset, but also being like, hey, man, my son's only going to be three years old once. You know, I don't want to miss Correct. these unbelievable years, man. And it's like he's five and a half now, and every year has been so cool. So it's been... It's just been like, you know, I think if I if if I was 38 and I didn't have a kid still, I'd maybe professionally would be farther along, but I've made those intentional sacrifices to make sure that I am present and around and doing things and being with the family. Uh, and I definitely I wouldn't trade that. I think that's uh, I think that's yeah, super that's important. So that's I mean, and I know you're kind of navigating the same thing of like wanting to, you know, as a 26 year old man, you're a lot younger than I am wanting to continue to grow your business and have these, these ventures that you go after, but also want to make sure you're there in your son's life and stuff. Moments. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, that's, that's why I kind of want to wait right now and make sure I have that time, uh, for him Yep. and not be spread out even thinner between business, him and a new kid. Yep. Um, because yep. the the first year is like the roughest, and then it's the first crazy. two years I've heard are the rougher years. Yep, we're halfway through the second year. Yeah, so, you're uh, you're in the thick of it, man. I'll tell you, every year's crazy, but I nice. now at three, like four or five, it starts to be it's just kind of all cruise nice. control. And to my, give my wife credit; she does a lot for us. But 
it yeah, does I'm, become. I'm so blessed that Hannah is stay at home. Yeah, yeah, same, same with mine. So that that helps us <coughs> infinitely, um, because I, I could not have the output I have on YouTube if uh, she was also working. Yep. Like that would just be yeah. I yeah, I remember COVID was a special time because that was we had had he was in daycare age, super young, and all of a sudden when daycare shut down and my yeah. wife was working in the hospital as a nurse, it was like, okay, I'm now responsible for this child four days a week. And so like <laughs> there was a stretch where I was yeah. wrecked because I was like taking care of this young kid by myself for like six to eight hours. My wife would get home, we'd eat dinner and I'd be like doing the YouTube thing until like one or yeah. two or whatever, just a day after day. So like, but that's the seasonality of life, man. You know, you go through those phases where you're burning the candle at both ends, and then hopefully that that hard work pays off, and you can find a little bit more balance once the family's involved and stuff. So, yeah, I yeah. remember you were killing it back during COVID as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah, yep. That's we insane. Were, that was that would do it. It was. Uh, I was in peak. I was in peak. I was in my prime time back then. I'm. I think I'm. I'm aging up a little more now. So it's like, I'm still. I'm I'm working hard just in a different capacity. Like I'm 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 really I don't know. I'm just I feel like I found a pretty good balance that I'm happy with and I'm blessed to be able to still continue to do what I do with the main channel. I'm I'm having a lot of fun just doing this, having conversations with people I've met over the years who I respect yeah. and uh, appreciate that are, you know, in this same vertical as I am. Mm -hmm. Um so this has been a really nice change of pace for me because, you know, podcasting and these types of things certainly aren't new but they're new to me as far as a style of content um and it's been it's been a lot of fun so i want to thank you for being on and just chatting with me for a couple hours man give me a few hours of your time i know before before we logged in you were like trying to get your son down he's getting out of exactly. bed you're like you're like i'll be on in two minutes and then it's yeah like, no and then he woke up like, and then i was trying to like scarf down fast food for me which was just steak and eggs because yes. I'm, I'm on the health grind i've been on the health grind since my son was born my man so, you look good uh, i've i try and do the same i slip off the wagon from time to time but i'm a steak and eggs guy as well <laughs> yeah no, i'm down i'm down like i was like 190 at my heaviest i'm now Whew. one uh I'm now 170, I think. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, so, you look good. I could tell you were slimmer in the face, even though you got the hoodie on, but yeah, you know, killing it. Oh, yeah, do, do be hiding it all. Dude, hoodies are just comfort. I, I dress for comfort. I That's, don't blame you. I don't blame you. But uh, no, it's 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 been good. Getting a little bit on my supplement grind as well. But uh, other than that, yeah, I'm just trying to optimize so I have the most amount of energy to carry into the next day. Because that's, it's already spread dude, out so thin, <laughs> dude. That's what it, that's really what it comes down to for me. There's the there's the the outward, the physical appearance, the confidence of how you look is one thing, but yeah, it, it, if if I'm not eating and training and getting decent sleep, I just you can't. That is that's how you that's the real supplement. Like the supplements are nice, but like taking care of those pillars, you can't. There's a you know that's how you can perform at a high level. You got to take care of the body first, otherwise you just can't focus. You have no energy and like you said, when you get the when you get the kid and the family to take care of, and the mm -hmm. son's waking up at two a.m., four a.m., whatever, it's it can yep. be tough, but you make it happen. It's not. It's been good. It's also good to have like accountability partners. Like, uh, do you know who Exility is? Of course I do. Yeah. Do you? Uh, Dylan, yeah. No, right? he's my yeah. gym accountability partner. I hit the gym with him like three so or four funny. times a week. Oh, you do. You guys live in the same area, mm -hmm. wherever that is. Yeah. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah, I've met him a few times. He was uh oh man that's so funny, yeah we're that's right cool. Tell DC. him tell him I said what's up. Yeah, I, I met him in a Mr. Beast shoot one time when we were doing a video back in the day, and he's yeah. always interesting to talk to. He's like Mr. Ant like YouTube analytics guy. He's always been the yeah, yeah. no they, they were also the guys who got me uh, like actually into crypto back in like 2017. Okay, hell yeah, because they sense. got all the comment or a bunch of the commentary channels on a call, and then they were like. Buy Bitcoin and Ethereum now, or you're gonna regret it forever. <laughs> and then one of this like long rant for like that's so four funny. hours of why we should do it. And then you did it, but, and then you but you sold it at three. Yeah, I sold I sold it like three k. <laughs> I sold like most of my shit yeah. then because I was so scared and I didn't have any money then. Right? Yeah, hundred percent. So, so you see, yeah, I, it I, was I like, agree. oh, okay. Cool profit. Uh, I'll take a lot of it off, and then Ooh, suddenly fifty percent. Let's go wild, and yeah. then I went, oh, oh, okay. Whoops, the daisies.
Uh, but we learned in the next bear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, we did. Yeah, everyone has to go through, you know, one tough cycle first before you, you start making some decent decisions, I think. Yeah. At least that's, that's what I tell myself. That's the, the coming of age. <laughs> so I tell, that's well, that's how I things. justify that's how I justify my own failures. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, it's been a treat talking to you, man. Uh, I'll let you get get to sleep so you can get up and have some energy for your job and your son. But thanks so much for coming on and chatting for a little bit. No worries. Thank you so much for having me. It's Fuck been yeah, man. awesome this that you is, have a uh, podcast now as well. Yeah, and this is a Tozy. Check him out on YouTube. A Tozy, he's A T O Z Y. He makes very fun and informative uh, videos about what's going on in the world. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you. I appreciate it. 